Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our virtual information session for our Bachelor of Science in Nursing, particularly our RN to BSN track at FIU. My name is Carla Maria, and I am a part of the FIU online department at the university. And I've been a part of FIU for over 10 years now. And in my role, I work to make sure that employees across our communities and community members have access to FIU's fully online programs. And it's my pleasure to introduce a few of my colleagues here today. First off, we have Dr. Nola Holness, Clinical Assistant Professor. Dr. Holness, would you like to share a little bit about yourself? Hi, everyone. Welcome. And it's a joy to be with you in this time and in this space. And I want you all to know firsthand that over 20 years ago, I was right where you were. I also completed the RNTBSN program. So I'm happy to know that 20 years later, FIU still has this opportunity for you and for me, for us to engage and to find out more about the program. And that it's still an opportunity for you as an RN to be able to pursue your bachelor. So welcome. We look forward to a rich engagement together today. Thank you, Dr. Holness. And with us today is also Cheryl Ann Mullins Black, our interim RN to BSN coordinator. Cheryl Ann, would you like to share a little bit about yourself as well? Sure, certainly. Thank you, Carla. Welcome everyone to this stage of your next step of or next stage of your life, so to speak, right? Um, so I am the interim RN to BSN coordinator. I've been with the College of Nursing and FIU for six years. I've been in other roles in higher education for uh, greater than 10 years. Um, so I do understand where you're at in terms of maybe your next steps, you're a little bit anxious, et cetera. So we're here as part of the full resources team to give you that support, to provide you with the guidance and let you know what your next steps are. And so welcome. Thank you, Cheryl Ann. And with us today is also Carla Pagan, Enrollment and Recruitment Coordinator for the program. Carla, would you like to also share a few words about yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Carla. I work with, of course, everyone else on this team. I've been with FIU Online for almost four years now, but realistically, I've been at FIU for seven years. I did two degrees here. Um, and I guess I can't seem to get enough of FIU. So of course, like everyone else, we're, um, I'm here to assist through the application process um, and hopefully get you to your goals. Thank you, Carla. And now that you learned a little bit about each of us, we actually wanna learn a little bit about each of you connected today. And we have one question for you, which is what is <laughs> your reason and what is your motivation to pursue your BSN degree. So we have a few um, motivations or a few reasons as to why some of our students pursue the BSN degree, but we would love to hear directly from you. So if you can share your reason, your why over the chat, we would love to learn a little bit about you and just find out why you're here. And Dr. Holness, as, as, as our guests share their reasons and their motivations, um, what are some of the reasons and motivations that you have heard from former students as to why they decide to pursue their BSN? The reasons may vary, Carla Maria, but typically there is this drive for career advancement for sure, and the idea that you can be promoted, you can move forward in your career because the bachelor degree becomes almost like a door, an opening to the wide vista that nursing presents. So I see a number of students who are coming in, they have worked in the field for a while, they've settled in, they kind of like have an idea where they want to be. And for most of them, it's that idea of the career advancement, the promotion. Again, definitely some will go for the income, you know, and the fact that you can travel as an RN with a BSN, you are a lot more marketable. <clears throat> so I see a number of them filling in those roles, especially when there's a community drive 
where nurses are needed from not necessarily the hospital only, but with a community focus. So I've seen that as well. And it gives them the idea to be able to meet their needs of career advancement and, and the passion that they have towards their nursing career and really want to move forward. I've seen that a lot as well. And, you know, um, that that makes sense, you know, the, the different reasons, um, because really there's 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 so many right reasons to pursue a a, 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 B, a BSN degree, really any degree, but more so a BSN degree. So th thank you for sharing, you know, kind of like the regions you've 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 heard from students in the past. And um, thank you each for sharing your reasons and your motivations. And we'd, we'd love to get started just sharing information about Florida International University. So Florida International University is the public research state university in Miami, Florida. And we offer bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs in many different fields, including nursing, but also business, architecture, law, and medicine. And one of the things that we're most proud of at FIU is that we're actually one of the largest universities, largest public universities in the United States based on enrollment class size. So right now at FIU, we have over 57,000 students enrolled across all of our bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs. And over our time, we've graduated over 224,000 alumni who decided to pursue their degree at FIU. We're also an institution that highly caters to minorities. So right now we are the number one university in the nation to award bachelor's and master's degrees to Hispanic students. Additionally, since the very beginning that FIU was created, FIU has always catered to non-traditional students. So many of our students, they actually, um, they have very busy lives. They work full time, they have different responsibilities at home. And for us as an institution, it's very important that our programs are flexible and accessible to our students. So at FIU, we created FIU Online, which is the department at the university that supports all of the online programs and services for our students. And really our mission at FIU Online is to connect our FIU students and lifelong learners to the highest quality online educational experience. And that's just regardless of where you may be located or when's the most convenient time for you to log in and connect with your classmates, with your professors and complete your coursework. And at FIU Online, we know a thing or two about providing exceptional online education and an online learning experience. So we've been providing online education for over 20 years at FIU. And right now we have over 100 fully online degree programs. And over our time, over 10,000 students have decided to pursue their degree and, we, and have been graduated with a fully online degree at FIU. And we recently hit a very major milestone. So we recently became the number one university in the country to have the most number of courses certified by Quality Matters. This is major because what this Quality Matters certification shares with the world is that FIU Online's courses are effective in making sure that our students are learning and that they have a positive and engaging online experience. And right now, now that I've shared a little bit about FIU and what online education is at FIU, I'm gonna hand it over to Cheryl Ann so that she can share with you more about our nursing and health sciences college. Thank you, Carla Maria. Just wanna make sure everyone can hear me okay. So our college is um, 
versatile in terms of, I would say, our diversity. Um, I would hasten to say that we are probably one of the most diverse colleges in on the campus uh, as well. Um, we do what's called a, a catered approach, you know, our primary undergraduate degrees are nursing and health services administration. And they're quite popular, obviously, um, you know, pre-COVID and now post-COVID. Um, as you see there, over 12,000 FIU nursing alumni, a um, thousand students across the programs. We do have a great, I just wanna, you know, brag on our Star Center, which is our simulation lab. Um, and I know Dr. Holders will probably touch a little bit more about that later on, but we do have that facility, which is great for your uh, patient care assessment and for you to do your hands-on experience. So I would say that about our college. And of course, as one of the attendees mentioned, we do offer the nurse anesthesia program and we, which, and we also have our DNP. So again, we have from undergrad to graduate to doctoral degrees, so you can advance in this career of nursing. You do not just have to stay at that level where you're just obtaining your BSN. There are all other pathways for you to advance in your nursing career. That's right, Cheryl. And, and as Carla said earlier, she had two degrees here at FAU. I had three. As a matter of fact, I started at FAU as a non-degree seeking student because I was finishing my midwifery education elsewhere. And that became my love affair with FAU. So all my three degrees, the undergrad, master's, and PhD, all here at FIU. So yes, once you become a Panther, I guess <laughs> you stay one forever, right, Carla Pagan? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> um, so now we're going to kind of go into some quick facts about the program. So luckily, this is the accelerated pathway to get your BSN degree, of course, for registered nurses. Um, it is convenient. It's online courses, and the program can be completed in three semesters, um, which is important. Um, only 33 credits of upper division coursework, of course, um, with the ability to gain the 27 credits um, upon completion of the program. Um, one of the other important things, of course, we like to reiterate, we do have non-Florida residents and we have Florida residents. So here are the tuition costs. For Florida residents, the tuition cost is $228.81 per credit, whereas the non-Florida resident tuition is $345.87 per credit. Um, we want students to apply as soon as possible. So below you do see the deadline for applications. However, if you are qualified after reviewing this presentation and you want to apply to get started, um, we recommend to do it as soon as possible so that we can get all of your documents in and we can kind of make sure you kind of move forward as soon as possible before enrollment begins um, in November. Thank you, Carla. And um, just going on about more about FIU and about our programs, Cheryl Ann, why don't you share a little bit about some of our accreditations and rankings? Right, so as you see there, uh, we're regionally accredited by uh, SACS, which is what we call it in the, for short. Um, the r and BSN program specifically is approved by the Florida Board of Nursing, and we are accredited by the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, or CCNE for short. And accreditation is very important in terms of um, any program because it kind of gives a benchmark as to the standard or quality of the instruction. So it's key that you, the school that you're attending, um, is accredited. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a future slide. Thank you, Cheryl Ann. And um, right now, we've got another question for each and every one of you that's joining us tonight. And really, we want to talk about trends. Particularly, what trends will most transform the nursing industry? So if you're here today, it's because you're already in the nursing industry. Um, and we want to know, you know, firsthand from you, what you think, which are those trends that are going to transform nursing, that are going to transform the industry. And I guess if you can share kind of like what you think those trends are going to be over chat, we'd love to discuss with you. Um, and we've got some some options on the on this on on the screens based on based on feedback from different folks. Everything from a shift to more outpatient procedures to a rise in telehealth. 
um, but really maybe you've seen something that we haven't noticed. So why don't you, you know, we, we'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, Dr. Holness, what trends do you think are going to transform the nursing industry? A number of trends. I think we hit the nail on the head with these that we have here, but definitely, uh, you know, with the change in our nursing or health environment with COVID, we see a lot more travel nursing occurring as the needs are greater in other states and nurses are, you know, mobilized into different um, states and different uh, hospitals and so. So we do see a change and a shift in how nurses are mobilized and employed. So that definitely will have to, we have to keep our eyes open on that trend. But for sure, telehealth as well, definitely with people, you know, needing to be home and uh, social distancing and so, has created an opportunity for an increase in telehealth and telehealth nursing. So we'll see how that goes. Away. But as Carla Maria says, we'd love to hear what you have to say, what you have seen in your own personal experiences in terms of the trends in nursing. So, so we'll give you a, a, a few more seconds to kind of share um, what trends you think are going to impact the industry the most um, over chat. I know, you know, ever since the, the pandemic began, just out of personal experience, um, I have seen a, a rise in telehealth and I, I, you know, I think it's here to stay, you know, mm -hmm. I think there's, there's, there's some services and some care that can be done via telehealth and then other ones that, that may not be done as easily. But, you know, I think um, as the industry evolves and as services and technology evolves, I think um, so will the industry and, 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 and the ways in which we best provide care. So. so we're in a very dynamic state right now, you know, with, with changes occurring here, changes occurring just about everywhere. So it's interesting to see where, where you land. What fit you'll have in the, as an RN now? As I speak about, you know, your passion, your, your desire to grow, your desire to lead, it will be interesting to see where you, you, you what niche you fill as an RN uh, with your BSN degree and moving forward. I think a number of you have mentioned that you want to be CRNA. So again, FIU offers the opportunity for that continued growth. So once you get that BSN in, you work your way on up, whether it's the DNP or the, the um, PhD, all the options are available. Right, and I'm glad you touched on that, Dr. Holness, because I think sometimes there is this um, misnomer that they, you know, once you become a nurse, you kind of stay like bedside nurse, you know, and I know that has evolved over time, but I know a few years back, you know, in a presentation that we did do um, for, you know, mostly for our freshman students, you know, they're quite unaware that the nursing profession you know, there is advancement and growth. And so I'm yeah. definitely looking, you know, it's interesting to see these trends as well, because it's also, you know, um, causing a lot more interest in nursing versus the field of medicine, which, you know, tends to be a little bit more popular. And, you know, what one of the feedback that was received in the chat is, is related to the nursing staff shortage. Um, and, and, you know, so, so Mallory, Mallory, uh, kind of, uh, you know, shares a few points there, um, where, where, where they're hit on the nail, um, talking about an increase in demand for nurses. Um, but then really the hospitals are still very short staffed, um, and, and with the travel, you know, that is required, um, for, because of the pandemic. So I, I think, more than ever, you know, we're feeling the shortages, um, but, but that's why we're here, right? To try and, and, and fill those shortages. <laughs> yes, yes. So we're happy to have you guys, happy to have your interest, spread the word, and we're looking forward to seeing you becoming enrolled. That's right, that's right. And um, right now I'm gonna hand it off over to, uh, back over to you, Cheryl Ann, for you to, to share the, the credits breakdown of the program. Certainly, thank you, Carla Maria. So as you can see there, the bachelor's degree requires 120 credits in total, okay? Uh, the majority of you, um, for those of you are, who are RN already, um, you have your RN already, I should say, you would have already come in with the 60 credits of lower division credits, 
and obviously to ensure that your nursing practice, your skills are, you know, still in that field of knowledge, so to speak. We do have this prior learning assessment course that kind of gets you to kind of, uh, you know, revive your skill sets. You know, if you've been a nurse for a certain period of time, certain skills that you developed initially when you started your nursing uh, career or nursing school may not have touched on that for a while. So this class then brings that home so that you can then, you know, kind of revive, okay, you know, your health assessment or your patient care, whatever the, the, the skill set is, okay? And of course, the requirement is for you to have an ADN or AFN, so an associate diploma in nursing or associate science of nursing um, uh, credential along with a 2.75 GPA, okay? And then obviously, as Carla Hagan um, uh, said otherwise previously, 33 credits specifically in the curriculum. So it's really a quick accelerated pathway that's online. So you're not in that, you know, probably traditional rut where you're like, you know, you're anxious to get to class, you're studying all the time. I mean, you will have to study, but it's more of an easier pathway that I would say. So 27 credits focused on nursing coursework specifically and six upper division elective credits in any discipline. So we have a variety of courses in other areas that you can also take that will help you to satisfy this requirement. If I may had just if I may just add a little bit to the um, PLA, so that's your prior learning assessment that Cheryl mentioned just now, everyone. I teach that course. And let me tell you, we started fall 2020 and it has been such a relief for the students because we struggled a lot with the external Excelsior exams. So for years, students would be not be able to pass or they wouldn't be at the time to go study, to go take the exams because they were so rigorous. And we had students five years waiting to move just to pass those exams. So now that we've instituted the program, oh, you, students are able to move through quicker. And uh, as Sharon mentioned, we assess you for your medical surgical experiences, your maternity experiences, your pediatric experiences, and your psychiatric experiences. So you bring all that knowledge, you, we assess you in two ways. One is by the exams. So you'll be sitting for exams, but again, the students have done really well in the last couple of semesters since we have offered this. Then we also assess your learning by a portfolio. So you're able to brag about yourself. You can talk about your pro what you've accomplished so far, what your goals are, what are some of the credentials that you have already in nursing, because many of you are leaders already. Some of you are nurse managers, some of you are associate nurse managers, or some of you are just starting your nursing career, and you are the ones I love to talk with because I get all that expectations and what plans are in the future. And I love it. I love living through your eyes, right? So again, you get a chance to complete those 27, it's a three credit class. Once you have successfully completed it, you have the internal award of 27 credits from FIU, okay? So we, we try and do this early in the program. So you get that out of the way and you can then move forward as you uh, transition into your new role. And, you know, kind of looking into what those, um, what those credits look like, here are the list of courses. Um, Cheryl, Ann, why, why don't you share more details about these courses and, and kind of like what our prospective students here tonight can, can expect? Certainly. So as it's outlined there, it's basically the outline of what was just stated by Dr. Holness. So the 3805 course that you see there is the course that she was mentioning where your skills will be assessed, right? Um, and so that's basically, as you can see, I mean, it's really, I don't know about you all. Sometimes I think about if I could relive my life, I'd probably become a nurse, <laughs> to be honest, because it's so, it's such a, it's such an easier pathway, you know what I mean, to really get your nursing career, um, you know, and obviously everyone learns differently, but what you see there is exactly what you get. When I do the plans, it's literally as you see, as I outlined there. And of course you can go at your own pace. I mean, depending obviously on your, your work, you know, if you're working full time, you know, especially, you know, again, 
the pandemic is upon us. It doesn't appear to be going away anytime soon, right? So you might be, you know, uh, you have some external pressures there at work. So we work with you because this program is extremely flexible, unlike a traditional nursing program. So I just wanted to just highlight that. And as you see to the right there, the uh, final semester deadlines are those there. In that situation, you would have to make sure your clinical clearances um, satisfied, you know, whether it's your your vaccines, your PPD, et cetera, your background check, all of the things that if you're working in a clinical site, you literally would have to have up to date for that site. It's the same here when you get to that uh, junction of your program. And as I mentioned before, this is the See this final semester that we're talking about. This is when you're doing your practical practicum and your community hours. As you see, there is 30 hours for the community, which is the NUR 4636C course. And then the practicum, senior practicum, which is with the clinical um, side of the program, it's 120 practicum hours. We also offer the flexibility um, in the event that you know, students are unable to, um, you know, work at the facility, not work, I should say, do the practicum hours at the facility of choice, we do offer on a limited scale uh, faculty preceptors. And I don't know if Dr. Holness wants to talk a little bit more about that aspect of the senior critical practicum course. All right, thank you, Sharon. So this is the point where you say to yourself, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're thinking, oh, I'm going to graduate soon. This is it, I'm done. So this is the final semester, that last hill that you're gonna climb up. And when you get there and this is done, then you know you're ready to walk across that stage, get that degree and move on. The practicum class 4945, 4945L, I also teach that. So this is where you are going to, having completed all the company requirements that Cheryl mentioned and listed right here, then you come into the class. You select, I prefer if you select your a preceptor from one of the hospitals that you're worked in or whether it's um, a research kind of a background. I've had students who have done um, clinical research as their, as their profession, as their, their career. So they carry this in. And you would then spend the course of the semester with that preceptor. You work on a project within the community, within the facility, you identify a need, and then you create the opportunity to at least begin to address that need. So it's a leadership, it's like a capstone, if you will, for your program, where you're now coming alongside a preceptor, coming alongside somebody in leadership in the profession, whether it's research, management, a clinical leader, whether it's a CFO or a CNO, I've had, I've had all, the, all the experiences. With, with, with different roles in nursing. You come alongside that leader, you shadow that person, you develop that leadership skill as well. At the end of the course, you then report on how you have done and you go away with a sense of accomplishment because it was your passion, it was your problem that you were able to address and solve within that community. And, and part of, you know, part of the different services offered um, for the RN to be a SEND program include, um, include career development. Um, Dr. Holness, would you be able to share a little bit about kind of like the different career development um, options available for our students in the program? Yes, yes. Rather than have you, you know, trying to figure out what am I doing? No, I'm finished with, I'm thinking of the BS is almost done. What am I doing? What we've created here at FI, I don't teach this class, another professor does. So if you have any questions, I can absolutely link you with her and the team that teaches this class. But the idea is before you leave FIU, we can offer you all the different options that are available here. And for you to think about how do I move on from my BSN? We don't wanna leave you in the lurch, if you will, or, or leave you hanging on a limb. You have an idea as to where to go next. So here you can look at your own self-assessment. What are my, my, my skills? How can I enhance them? How can I move my career to the next level? 
So in this course, you're given information about the current job outlook for, for nurses, you, the resources are available depending on graduate school. And I must add, I think later we're gonna talk about it a little bit more, but I must add, excitingly, FIU has an RN to MSN education track as well. That should start in fall 2022. The idea is you seamlessly go from your RN once you enter FIU, move on through the BSN with some additional gains because you're continuing to the master's level. So that's exciting. And there's no other school offering that, okay? So we need you here to do that. But again, these are some of the different tracks that you can go to once you've graduated with your BSN. You stay right here and you move, as I mentioned, the BSN to MSN, your PhD like I did. I went straight through FIU, did my, did my um, adult nurse practitioner, which is now the adult um, um, gerontology primary care NP. And then I did my um, PhD. So here are all the options available. Take a look, see where you think you'd fit in. As well as, like we mentioned, there's a CRNA, that's a nurse anesthesia DNP. That's the CRNA, your RN to BSN, and you move right on. The options are you just, it's just incredible how wonderful nursing is. As Sherilyn said, I think this is a profession that you really should, should hold dear and, and consider it precious because your options are just so varied and wonderful going into the future. And talking about going into the future, um, but then also, you know, what we're living today. Um, we have another another question for for you all in the audience, um, and it's related to travel nursing. So, with an increase in the amount of travel nurses, what are the pros and cons of travel nursing? So, if if, if you can share your responses in the chat, but I know Dr. Holness, um, you you've seen firsthand the experience from travel nurses because many of our students. Um, are actually travel nurses. So, so what, Dr. Holness, what do you think are some of the pros and cons that come with travel nursing? I have seen, as you mentioned, several of our students are travel nurses. And the beautiful thing is that wherever you are, wherever you are in the country, you can absolutely link up with us. You definitely, yes, Angel, you definitely brought new horizons. You meet new people, you get that great pay. And also, you know what you do? you build your nursing experiences because some of the challenges or the experience you have in these other hospitals in other states, you may not have had in Florida or have had in your home state. But one of the downside is you, the hospitals that are left where the nurses left may now be so short and that may be a challenge. You know, so again, it's a, it's a balance and also the idea is you want to build that experience because I would, I, would, I would be disheartened if you are running into a travel nursing position and you're not coming with a background. You're not coming with a skill set to really give the best care that is possible. So again, you really want to think about it. Am I ready to go? And a number of my travel nurses who are in the program now, they say, you know, I, 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 I didn't do it initially. I made sure I had a year under my belt at least. And I could build that expertise, build up some of my nursing judgment and critical thinking and problem solving skills. Because when you go into those travel nursing positions, they are expecting you to function in that quick moment by moment decision making. So you want to build that up before. But yes, there are pros and cons. And again, it's going to be your individual decision, how you think it will work best for you. So again, look at the pros and cons. Go for it if it's for you stay in your local hospital, build up that experience, and then absolutely do what you think is best. And to your point, Dr. Holness, I was going to say that could be, you know, uh, a con in terms of, of not having that proper foundation in a specific area, in a specific clinical setting for a period of time, because you want to make sure, as you said, that you have those critical skills under your belt, so to speak, so that when you go out there, into the different cultures, right? Because we're, we're, Florida obviously is a melting pot of everyone, but then you might be going to a state where um, individuals may not necessarily be as diverse as yourself, right? So you want to be able, as Dr. Holman said, to pivot. So you can you know, pivot really quickly in a scenario that you may not have necessarily come across or may not have come across in that specific way. So I just wanted to add to that. Well, thank you. Thank you, um, 
Dr. Holness, and thank you, Cheryl Ann, for kind of sharing your insight on travel nursing. And um, thank you each each audience member that shared your um, your pros and cons in, in the chat. And we we also want to share with you one of the experiences by one of our alumnus, um, Carlos Vasco. He graduated from the RN to BSN program. And some of the highlights that he shares from his experience include being able to balance working full-time and part-time as a nurse while still completing the online program. And then also being able to manage the 120 hours on time and the senior practicum class. And then really, you know, I think the, the, his, last, um, his last experience and highlight really relates to the former two, which is really the support system from FIU and from the entire university um, and staff behind the program, just making sure that, you know, Carlos had a good experience, but really we are here to make sure that every single one of our students in our RN to BSN program has a good experience and has that support system. And um, Dr. Holmes, I don't know if maybe you want to add a little bit more about that support system that our students receive in the program. I am happy to be, to come alongside you, especially having lived the experience myself. So I think we are so positioned here with admissions, with enrollment, FIU online, with Cheryl Ann coordinating, you know, your direct contact with her. And we also have a Ask Dr. Holness portion on our website. So you can have that intimate, if you will, direct question and answer to me as well. And then I forward them to Cheryl Ann. She contacts you and we, we keep you close to our hearts, if you will, okay? So Carlos did hit the nail on the head, you know, where he said he really found the support system here to be satisfying and very, very helpful in getting him to his goal. So I hope you guys will feel the same way as well. Thank you, Dr. Holness. And right now we wanna share with you what you need to be able to join our program. Um, so, so Cheryl Ann, why don't you share with our audience tonight, what is the admissions eligibility for the program? Absolutely, thank you, Carla Maria. So as you see there, obviously we need you to have a registered nursing license, right? Um, the 2.75 cumulative GPA I previously mentioned, it's key that the school must be, again, ACEN accredited. So that's very important. Um, again, a minimum 2.0 GPA in your coursework previously um, to obviously get the, uh, the GPA um, for the rest of the 60 credits, I should say. And obviously your nursing prerequisites. So those are uh, common across the board for all nursing programs. However, our program is a little bit more flexible in terms of the fact that um, the nutrition and the ethics and the stats courses can be done as an elective in our program. So I just wanted to highlight that. And obviously there are degree requirements as far as the Florida state requirements are, as you see there, Gordon Rule with Writing, which is a writing requirement. The university core curriculum requirements are what was previously called general education requirements. So that would be your, your humanities, social sciences, et cetera. And obviously the foreign language requirement is also required for graduation. Typically the requirements for the those four and the 60 credits of lower division typically come from a student who has gone the pathway of pursuing an Associate of Arts degree out of Florida State College System such as MDC, Miami Dade College, or Broward College, which are some of the most popular ones. And as I previously mentioned, and you're going to hear this a lot, we can't stress it enough, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason being is at why accreditation matters, as you can see there, we are subject to regulatory review by an approved reputable agency. Not sure of, of those uh, that are on this um, information session, but there have been some for-profit schools 
one of which has closed down in recent few years where students have obtained their license and sadly they cannot move forward. And the reason is because that school was not properly regulated. And so what ended up happening was the Department of Education shut it down. So you want to avoid that as much as possible. So for those of you who have not yet pursued your Associate of Science in Nursing, um, we want to make sure that you do your research. So I will post the links for the various accrediting bodies in the chat. And if you have any questions about that, um, you can post it in the chat as well. So feel free to find out from your school if they are ACN accredited, so you know exactly where you stand. Definitely, definitely accreditation is a very big piece. Um, so thank you, Cheryl Ann, for, for sharing all those details. And um, where we want to share, what we want to share with you next is really what you need to do to be able to join and apply into the program. And, and Carla, um, my colleague, Carla Pagan, can you share what our audience members, what our prospective students need to do to be able to apply into the program? Of course. So the first step, um, obviously, is to make sure you are submitting the FIU application. It is an online application. It can be found on our website, fiuonline.fiu.edu. Um, typically, the Apply Now button is in the upper right-hand corner of almost every single page, um, so it's not hard to miss. We recommend applying a the deadline for admissions, um, well, the admissions deadline is December 1st for all um, applications for spring. Um, so we always recommend doing it early on so that you can kind of move forward with next steps. Um, you know, have that potential discussion with the College of Nursing after everything is submitted to, to kind of move forward. Um, the second step, um, while you're working on the third step, actually, um, is making sure you're sending all official documents to FIU. FIU is a university, we require official documentation, and that does have to come from typically the actual source, or you, if you have um, a copy that you've never opened at all. Um, anything sent from the student unofficially, like electronically or anything like that, is considered unofficial, so please make sure you're submitting official documents to us. Um, if you did your language in high school instead of college, please make sure you are also submitting high school information. Um, but the main concerns would be is making sure you submit all of your college transcripts. If you've attended two colleges, we should be expecting two college transcripts, um, especially for transfer credit processing. Um, additionally, if you have attended um, any foreign schools, please keep in mind that you may be requested to submit um, an English proficiency examination, which um, could be TOEFL as written here. Um, there are other ways as well. Um, Duolingo English test is still being accepted at this time, um, so that is also another way. Um, if any of the documents are mailed, you can see here that we do have the PO box for the undergraduate admissions office, so that's where that information will go. Um, if you're attending local institutions, some of them actually know how to submit them electronically to FIU. Um, and then when you do actually go through the application process, you'll receive automated emails from us and emails from me on how other ways to submit transcripts, whether it's through other third party um, online electronic services or to the admissions um, email address as well. While you're working on the second step, it's also extremely important to make sure that you've already started your third step, which is the nursing CAS application. Uh, this is a secondary application that we utilize to um, kind of make sure all of your documents are being considered. Um, make sure you're going through the background checks, of course, um, providing the information that you need to. Um, and this application requires unofficial transcripts to be submitted. Um, so it's always important to, you know, maybe try to work on things as soon as possible, because if we only have the FIU application, we still need your nursing CAS application before you can move forward or vice versa. If you only submitted nursing CAS, we need you to start applying to FIU and start submitting documents. And to Carla's point, I can't stress that enough. It's very, I, and we know it, it can be a little bit confusing at times if you think you're done, but it's two separate applications that's done. And that's because again, you have FIU that's going to do the main um, review for admission to FIU, the institution. And then the secondary review for R2BSN 
is handled by the nursing cath system, which I have access to, and then I'll review, and then I will then follow up with an appointment just to discuss that with you. So again, it goes back to what the uh, previous alumni experienced, again, that personal touch, the additional resource that you have, that, you know, that, you know, hand-holding, if you will, so to speak, you know, until you can kind of, you know, go out there on your own. Okay, so actually the next uh, most important step while you're working on all of those steps, because we do have a lot, um, but of course we mean well, we want to make sure you're getting everything in and moving forward, especially if you are trying to apply for financial aid, we do want to make sure that you are trying to apply as soon as possible. Um, financial aid can take uh, weeks to process, which is why we always want to make sure students um, have that, you know, in the back of their head when they're already applying. Um, you can do it online via your laptop, computer. You can also do it actually through the app that they have. I remember when I submitted, I believe, my last FAFSA application, I did do it through the app, which is a little bit easier. Um, but of course, we want you to do it as soon as possible. Um, here, you can find our FIU federal school code so that we receive it. Just because you submit it to the government doesn't mean we receive it if we're not listed. So it is very important to go ahead and do that. Um, currently, the 2021-2022 application is open at this time, and that is the one that we need for spring 2022 coming up in January and for summer 2022. Um, FAFSA opens up every year on October 1st, so the one for next year fall will actually open up soon uh, within the next couple of days. Um, and remember that they do use taxes um, for the two years prior. So um, they'll be looking at 2019 taxes for this current year, and then they'll be looking at 2020 taxes um, when it comes to this newest one coming up. Um, for financial aid, the different offers um, given to students usually are grants and loans, which is what we're kind of most um, informed of. Grants, of course, are assist, um, is assistance that goes to qualified students. Um, they don't have to, you know, accept that information. That information is automatically accepted. Loans, um, this could be from the government, whether it is subsidized or unsubsidized. Um, or even private loans, depending on where you're coming from, you don't have to go through specifically financial aid or the FAFSA. Um, you can look into your own type of private loans, um, but that information does require repayment. Um, there are also scholarships. If anyone is qualified, if you see any scholarships that you may be qualified for, apply as soon as possible, just to kind of see if you can get, you know, the most amount of money to kind of move forward um, and maybe hopefully pay for your program. Um, we also do have funds for books, so a lot of students will receive potential um, advances for books. We actually have a book program um, now that's actually a part of the tuition unless students are not um, are opting out that assists students in making sure they get books um, that are not too crazy expensive and things like that. The main thing that I want to stress on this is please try to apply for financial aid as soon as possible. Um, I have had students before that have waited, unfortunately, till the last minute to ask about their financial aid. And, you know, if you're applying a week before courses start, there's no guarantee at that point. So we always want to stress um, earlier, the better. And we do have a financial assistance team. Their contact information is at the bottom of the screen. They can assist with any questions um, for applicants um, and things like that. I do want to add to what Carla just mentioned about not waiting until the last minute. It's very important. And, and we do understand that you're in careers that are demanding. And obviously with a, a hospital setting where there's a shortage of nurses, so we completely understand. But that's something you have to stay on top of because the process to get reinstated in your courses, if they are dropped because of non-payment, is really, really tedious. It's not easy at all. So we can't stress it enough. We don't want you to get to the point where you're focused on your assignments. And then before you know it, your courses, you no longer have access to your courses and that's because your courses are dropped. And it can happen really, really um, quickly because again, time flies by, flies by so quickly that you don't even realize it. And we understand that mistakes happen, but it's beyond our control with our team because we have to rely on the university partners at that point to follow their protocol and it can be very tedious. So I can't stress that enough.
And well, we've shared tons of information with you about our university, about the Nicole Wartime College of Nursing and Health Sciences, and about our online RN to be a SEND program. So right now, we want to invite you to first share any questions that you may have today so that we can answer them. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and share them via chat and we can answer them right here and now for you. But then also we wanna invite you to submit your application today. Um, and that way you can go ahead and get started with the application package. On the screen is also our contact information in case you ever wanna reach out to us in the future. Um, we're available via email, via phone number, and as Dr. Holness shared earlier, doc, you, you're able to chat with Dr. Holness um, through our website. So again, we are here to support you um, in your decision process. But I guess right now we open it up to questions in the chat um, so that we can answer any, any doubts that you may have. So let's see what questions come in. And we've been getting some really good ones. So thank you guys for your engagement, your questions, your responses. You're a good group. So we've got our, our, our first question, which we didn't already answer previously, um, which is, it's um, Angel asks, I am set to graduate from an ASN program in November, the, November the 24th. Do I have to pass the NCLEX before beginning the program? So I believe Dr. Holness exemplified this why what she stated when she said she started as a non-degree seeking student. So that option is there for you if you choose ANGEL. However, the most seamless pathway, of course, would be for you to obviously um, pass your NCLEX because we wouldn't need the RN licensure, correct? So um, as a non-degree seeking student too, you don't really have that many options as far as, um, you don't have the first pick of the litter, so to speak, as far as classes are concerned. Um, because you have to wait until everyone else who's degree seeking has enrolled. So the main thing is we need the RN licensure. And although you could start as a non-degree seeking student, you know, you kind of want to think um, holistically, would that be wise for you? Maybe you should focus first on completing your NCLEX mm -hmm. and then start seamlessly um, in the program after that is completed. Again, depends on your life situation. So thank you, Sharon, for giving the options. So yes, you either want to you know, focus because the entrance is rigorous. You get that out of the way under your belt and then you're, you're, you're ready for us. Or if you think you can, you know, cope with both, you want to start one course as a non-degree seeking while you're finishing up and getting that NCLEX done, then that would also be an option. But yes, it works much better if you go directly for your um, NCLEX, you know, that's done and then you get started. And Shayla, your question about the T's, the T's exam, that's not required for this program because again, this program is geared for students who are already RN, licenses on RN. When you're doing the T's, typically that's directed at a traditional nursing program for an, in a four-year format. So Laura was asking Charlene about the general classes. Would she be able to find that on our FIU website? So yes, clearly you, the, the general classes needed before entering the program. Are we talking about the prerequisites? Yes, I believe so. Okay, right. So the prerequisites, um, you know, we it's on our website specifically on our website. So they go to the CNH, cnhs.fiu.edu and I'll pull up the, the link in a minute. That's where they'll find the specific courses are prerequisite courses for the program to take. Um, if they're talking about general education requirements, such as the university core curriculum, which I previously mentioned, humanities, social sciences, that is also on the website, but that's not under our college. That's going to be under the academic and career uh, success um, unit, and they will have a PDF version there. But again, you have access to this information when you speak with me one-on-one, -on -one. I can share that with you if that's something you have a question on. So, you know, the bottom line is you'll have access to the information. All right. Somebody is, who is this? Somebody says, see you soon, Angel. <laughs> okay. 
we look forward to seeing you angel yes we bring come on on over angel we look forward to seeing you here also so we we've got a few more minutes left so if you want to have any last minute questions answered that's what we're here for um, although really um, you can connect with us afterwards as well and we can answer your questions then too. <laughs> Thank you all for your time. Oh, we've got a great question, which um, I, I think many student, many prospective students may feel this way. Um, the question is, who should I contact to review my unique situation regarding my credits? And that would be me, Maldina. So your the number is there to schedule an appointment. So that's the best um, course of action. It's better to do a specific appointment than do drop-in. That way I can dedicate the proper time to review your scenario and give you the proper you know, pathway options that you're seeing. So yes, these faces you see here, um, here today, you know, these are the faces you're going to continue seeing, um, plus many more faces um, as you join our program, as you apply, and as you join our program. And of course, Carla is there too, to um, kind of, you know, let's say you're not sure about a school and you don't know if you want to go through the process of, uh, of committing to applying, which we completely understand. So Carla Pagan is also there as a resource for you as well. So the best course of action really would be for you to take a picture of this um, screen here, and that way you can reach out to either of us. All right, we've got about two more minutes left. So if you have any more additional questions, we'd love to answer um, any, any doubts that you may have and get them squared away. Well, you know, I think we answered all of the questions. This is <laughs> phenomenal. Um, however, I know that you're going to have questions in the future. So um, again, as Cheryl Ann said, just um, feel free to contact and connect with us. Um, contact us in the future. We, we'd love to, to, to speak one-on-one -on -one with you about your particular situation and um, help you take the next best steps for you. So with that, um, we want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for considering FIU. And we really hope that you join the FIU RN BSN oh. community. So thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.